What is space? Welcome to this video, which is a direct sequel to What is gravity? There we found out that gravity is nothing but a quality of space warp and that space can be warped without, without matter. And that expansion might just be a reduction of space warp. All this is created by the same entity that creates space, time, matter and energy. Now to dive deeper into our question of what is space, we remember the clues that our previous episode about gravity revealed. Is space warped by default? Imagine looking down a long alley of trees. What do you think that space is? The straight line of your gaze? Is it possible at all to see space? Why are we so certain that space is straight? What if that which creates space is warped like this? The same question applies to our method of measuring distances. Looking at our solar system, we measure by going on the straight line, although we know that the underlying space is warped here by the sun's gravity. It is a bit like corrugated sheet metal, where we might not be able to see the corrugation at all. The next important step is the question of what is expansion. For that we go back to our cosmic horizon and ask at what distance is the expansion equal to the speed of light. The expansion of the universe is defined by the Hubble constant and there is an uncertainty to this number so don't pin me down on a specific value. With that we can calculate the distance as being 13.2 billion light years. And as long as the speed of light doesn't change, this our cosmic horizon bubble is constant in size, it doesn't change. We have to go on. If space is warped by default, the stretching or unfolding of it would make the universe seem to expand. If space has more than three dimensions, it could only appear to unfold itself, but in its own dimension it might not change at all. Let's blow up our cosmic horizon a bit. We think that space goes straight, but that what creates space might be as discussed, warped by default. Now if this space stretches, our straight and three-dimensional space seems to have expanded or it seems to be more space now. Also the space inside our cosmic horizon stayed exactly the same. If you would fill up a glass of water until it overflows, the amount of water in the glass doesn't increase too. It is unchanged. At this point we learned an important detail and can go back to our what creates what puzzle. We said that gravity is just the quality of space warp and now we discovered that space warp is just the quality of space. If being warped is in the nature of space, there is no need for space warp to be created by something. It's already there. Of all the things left, it is still space that is our main interest right now. So what it is for? What is space for? Well, it exists. And it is empty so that things can be in it. The mind twisting thing about this is that space wouldn't even exist without anything in it. You can try to see that, for example, by stretching out your hand in front of your eyes and then trying to feel what's in between, because there's nothing. Then we go on, where space is warped and it expands. It can have holes and it is infinite. Well, is it? I'm truly sorry, but there are more questions on our way of understanding space and this next one might make you go crazy if you don't pay attention. What do you think is beyond our cosmic horizon? Is there space? Imagine an alien planet close to our cosmic horizon. At one point, they sent out a message into the universe. This message 
travels to us at the speed of light, but effectively it moves only with about 50% of the speed of light since it has to fight against the expansion of the universe. This is a bit strange. The radius of our cosmic horizon is 13.2 billion years approximately, but light from the outer regions requires two times longer to reach Earth. The closer the light comes towards Earth, the less expansion and so on. Please remember that this has nothing to do with relativity. Light still travels at the speed of light. We're only looking at the effective speed here. As a side notice, this also means that what is in about 6.6 .6 billion light years radius now will be on the cosmic horizon radius by the time the alien message reached us. In this thought model, we neglect a few minor things. For example, the remaining lifetime of our sun, which is much shorter than 26.4 billion light years. Anyway, we pretend that one day the message will eventually reach Earth. But as we look into the direction of the alien planet, we see that it is gone. And there is no way of telling what happened to it anymore. It might have been destroyed or the aliens moved to another solar system, whatever. We don't know. And because we don't know, and we will never be able to, we can say that beyond the cosmic horizon, there are only possibilities. That which is not being observed. This would also apply to a big bang if it's outside our horizon. So Earth may be at the center of our universe, but there is no center for everything. How can there be a center for something that isn't even observed? Everything that is not being observed, where there is no conscious observer, exists in any possible state. Only in the moment of observation, one out of all possible states manifests. Possibilities means non-manifested things. Non-manifested things do not exist until they are observed, because then they manifest. This doesn't mean that everything behind our cosmic horizon is empty or full. It means that there is simply nothing, no space, no time, no matter or energy. This can't be understood by the mind. Maybe you remember, but the mind is just an illusion. And since we believe in this illusion, how should we believe in what's beyond? The reason why this is so hard to understand can be called the phenomenon of separated consciousness. And another name for this is scale confusion. Scale confusion is a human default setting. It is the error of not understanding the same reality from one side scale to a different side scale. In other words, planets expanding out of our visible universe is the same thing than hanging up your phone. The moment you hung up the phone, the other person's life is just possibilities to you. Or imagine watching a ship taking off from a harbor. In the moment the ship is out of sight, it's merely possibilities to you. It can be totally fine, or sunk, or exploded, or abducted by aliens, and so on. Now if a friend of yours calls from the other side of the globe, telling you that the ship is arriving at its destination, that's when all the possibilities collapse and manifest in one. The cosmic horizon of us on Earth might be 13.2 billion light years away, but your personal cosmic horizon is only as far as you can see. So remember, every time you turn around, what is behind you just became possibilities. At this point our initial question of what is space suddenly got somewhat secondary again. Another more powerful question arises, which is why does everything exist? 